They did it! They nerfed ring worlds. And then the apes nerfed void dwellers. Too. How could this happen? And then the birds took over and ruined their technocracy. And then cows. And then I don't know. Is that a slug? Maybe. No. They talked about nerfing Shattered Ring Origin in previous Dev Diaries. Today we are going to see what exactly they are doing. In addition to that, we've got quite a few changes to some civics. Some of our very popular civics like Technocracy are going to be getting a nerf. Let's dive into the Dev Diary and find out what on earth is going on over at the Custodian team. The first change is a change to Void Dwellers. Now, we don't know if this is going to be the only change they're making to the Void Dweller origin, but today they've only shown off a change to the Void Dweller trait. As you might know before, the Void Dweller trait had kind of two flavors. If you were on a habitat, you got cliff plus 15% resources from workers and specialists and a minus 10% growth speed. And if you were on a planet and got the negative version, you didn't get any bonuses, just a big minus 60% growth speed. However, if you had genetic modification, you could modify your species and remove the negative version of that. So they've done a change, and the change they've done is to wrap it all up into a single trait now. What does that trait do? Well, it gives you 15% bonus to pop output on habitats, minus 15% pop output on non-artificial worlds, pop growth speed minus 10% across the board, and pop happiness on non-artificial worlds minus 30%. But what does this mean? This means that your pops on habitats, they're going to be at their best. They will get 15% extra output. They will get a minus 10% growth speed, but that's in line with the previous version. However, on non-artificial worlds, so that is regular planets, you're going to be getting that pop growth negative speed of 10%, as well as 15% output decrease and 30% less happiness. This does mean that if you're on a uh, ring world though, you won't get any of the negatives, although you won't benefit from that plus 15%. And by negatives, I of course mean the non-artificial world negatives. Their pop growth speed remains constant. What do these changes mean? Well, this is going to make it difficult to conquer other planets and use your primary species, your void dwellers, as the rulers on those planets to boost stability and happiness. Now, if you're playing an aggressive Void Dweller build and you're going out conquering worlds, it is going to be more difficult to keep the stability and happiness of the worlds you conquer high. So that is going to be a, a negative impact for any military style Void Dwellers. If you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button. It's going to help get this video out to other players like you. What on earth have the Paradox team done to Shattered Ring? Well, before this update in, in 3, 3.0, 3.02, 3.03, as far as I was concerned, Shattered Ring was pretty much the most powerful origin in the game. Some people disagreed and said Necrophage was more powerful. That's fine. From now on, though, it looks like Shattered Ring is no longer going to be overpowered. Not, not at all. Not to the same level as it used to be. This is, uh, they, they've, cut the, they've cut the origin off at the knees. What have they done? Well, they've, they've made the progression of Shattered Ring resemble that of the Remnant origin. As you can see here from this image, there are now mining districts on the ring world. Why is that? Well, that's basically because your planet is going to resemble basically a regular planet until a little bit later on. But what do those mining districts do? It's important to note here that that central district of the five you see, that's not an energy district, that is a trade district. It gives you clerk jobs and artisan jobs. So you aren't going to be getting uh, generators on your ring world as a biological species. Of course, that trade district will be swapped out for a generator district if you're playing a hive mind or in machine intelligence. And most importantly, we should look at what is not here research segments are not available that will push the power of these ring worlds right down at the moment it was so powerful because you could quite cheaply get a research segment up get 10 researcher jobs in the first few years of the game and then get another segment a few years later and suddenly have 20 30 40 researcher pops really pushing up your research so the mining districts provide you scrap miner jobs. These jobs produce two minerals and one alloys. That 
does sound powerful, but let's let's break it down a bit further. If we had a, a metallurgist, we could convert two minerals into one alloy uh, for every 0.3 pops. So this here means you'd have two pops gaining you four minerals and two alloys. Uh, this case in the photo, it looks slightly higher than this. There must be some uh, buffs that they've got there, probably stability, other things that have increased it a little bit. But overall, that is going to be something of a hindrance. You're going to want minerals at the start of the game to produce a lot of your districts. If you're producing minerals and alloys, well, it's it's nice, but it's it's definitely not overpowered. It's an interesting change, absolutely, but not a really uh, a powerful change. What do these miners represent, though? Well, of course, as a ring world is so massive, what Paradox are trying to say is that, well, you could you could mine a little bit of the resources from the ring world, from the ring structure itself, without actually destroying or destabilizing the entire ring. And I think that's quite reasonable. A small civilization just doing a small amount of mining on a structure as big as a ring world, as big as, you know, four or five planets, well, that is going to be pretty reasonable to recover a small amount of debris. They've made it closer to the remnants origin. Well, what does that mean? How can you turn this shattered ring uh, world that you start off with, which has these segments or districts, unlike segments, should I say, which has these mining districts on, how can you turn that into a proper ring world segment? Well, once you've cleared all of the tile blockers, and it looks from the previous uh, picture like there were eight tile blockers there to clear, and you save up 10,000 alloys, and you research the mega engineering technology, you can then repair the shattered ring world, which will take around 10 years. That means that there is no way you are getting a fully functioning ring world until at least 2250, around that period, if you get up to the mega engineering technology. On top of that, is it even worth uh, repairing this ring, this uh, section and turning it into a ring world segment when you could instead uh, take one of the other two segments in the system and repair those uh, with the mega structure build speed. You could increase the build speed there. That would seem to be better than repairing this shattered ring. Overall, that generally means that the ring world, the shattered ring start is now not very powerful at all. It's somewhere around the same region as the remnant start, if not a little bit lower down than that one. They're bringing some quality of life changes, specifically to Ecumenopolis planets. What are those quality of life changes? Well, at the moment, when you convert a planet into, a, into an Ecumenopolis, your industrial districts automatically become foundry arcologies. And that can really screw up your uh, your empire it can screw up your economy because you are relying on some consumer goods being created that are no longer being created instead based on the planetary designation when you do the conversion to an ecumenopolis you will get foundry arcologies or factory arcologies and they've actually inc included another designation we'll get to that in a moment but basically if you're a foundry world you will now get foundry arcologies at a ratio of two to one so that's every industrial district uh, every two of them will become one foundry arcology and the same is true with factory worlds and industrial districts becoming factory arcologies for the consumer goods it's also going to be possible as a rogue servitor to both take the Arcology Project Ascension perk and actually use the decision to restore Relic Worlds into an Ecumenopolis. That's now going to be available to rogue servitors. That is really useful. In addition for rogue servitors, the Leisure Arcology is repurposed into a Sanctuary Arcology. That means per pop you're going to get Unity and complex drone output is going to be increased by uh, uh, one percent complex drone output i can't remember the unity i think it's around one and a half to one but that is really good uh or at least it's a really good change overall to have access to these arcology planets for rogue servitors as i talked about earlier there is a new planet designation and that is the industrial world consumer good worlds are now called factory worlds but what we've needed is a world when you didn't want to specialize in one or the other into uh, into artisans 
or metallurgist, you wanted to specialize into both, but get some benefit, and that is an industrial world. This lets you keep the number of artisan and metallurgist jobs while both receive a minus 10% upkeep when working those jobs. Hive worlds and machine worlds have also gained an additional bonus to bring them more in line with Gaia worlds. They now have plus one innate spawning drone or plus one innate replicator jobs on the planet. Uh, with resource consolidation, you're going to get a blocker which will have to be cleared for that, to get access to that extra replicator job. But that's going to help with your planets to make hive worlds just that little bit better. I think that's a reasonable and a good change to have. I think that uh, Gestalt hive mines, the biological ones, do need to have some more bonuses in there at present. They've also revealed a new building for subversive cults. Now a subversive cult is a megacorp with both the gospel of the massive masses and criminal syndicate. Uh, that's the two civics. Once you've got those, you are a subversive cult. But at the moment, they had the, the unique building they got, the Temple of Prosperity from Gospel of the Masses. It only uh, allowed them to increase the number of spiritualist ethics attraction as well as getting the Prosperity Preacher jobs. Instead, the Subversive Shrine also adds crime. That's quite a nice change. Uh, I look forward to using that building with some sort of Gospel of the Masses criminal syndicate build in the future. There are also going to be some changes to civics. First, I'm going to go through the benefits we're going to getting the improvements to our civics. And then after that, I'm going to be looking at some of the nerfs they're putting in. Uh, spoiler warning, technocracy is going to get a bit of a slap in the face. Beacon of Liberty, that's going to additionally give us a minus 15% Empire Sprawl from Pops, uh, combining that with a normal plus 15% Produced Unity. That's all right. Imperial Cult now doubles your Edict Cap. That's actually pretty good. Now, whilst that doesn't make Imperial Cult a particularly impressive Civic, it is a good bonus. It's doubled up its output. Really quite nice. Idealistic Foundation, that now gives you a 10% happiness bonus rather than 5. That's a good improvement. Environmentalist now reduces consumer good upkeep by 20%. So what we're kind of seeing here, generally speaking, is a doubling up of the previous bonuses. Uh, parliamentary system, that now gives 40% faction influence increase. Efficient bureaucracy gives a 20% admin cap rather than 10. Nationalistic zeal now uh, gives a minus 20% war exhaustion gain and minus 15% claim cost. And functional architecture, which is actually a really good civic, has been buffed. It now gives minus 15% building and district cost, plus two building slots. However, the upkeep reduction has been removed. Overall, this means functional architecture is a really good civic to have right at the start of the game. And as the game goes on, you will probably want to swap that out for something. But this makes it really powerful from the get-go. Those extra building slots and a reduced building and district costs are going to make it a really powerful civic to take. Now with hive mines, subspace E phase or F phase has got uh, gone from a 15% naval capacity bonus to also giving you a plus 20% ship speed. That's all right. Divided attention now doubles the admin cap bonus it was given before, going from 10 to 20%. That's pretty mediocre. We don't really care that much about the bonuses to admin cap here. And with machine intelligences, Constructo bots has had the same makeover that functional architecture has had, making Constructo bots a more powerful civic to have early on than it used to be. But what is it that they have nerfed? Well, the nerfs they're adding are not meant to massively destroy these civics, they're meant to be minor changes. So, the first thing, slaver guilds and indentured assets, they're reducing the enslaved population from 40% to 35%. That's a minor balance change. I'm not sure how much of an impact that's going to have overall, but that, that is something of a change. So, and it will, it will make it somewhat uh, less useful as a civic because the whole point is you want to have lots of slaves. That will reduce the consumer goods usage you're having as well as increasing the output you're getting from those enslaved pops. Now the big one here, technocracy, they've increased the consumer goods upkeep of scientists by one. This is a 50% increase in the upkeep cost of your researchers. That now brings the researchers more in line with something like uh, a researcher that you'd have in a hive mind, which a biological 
gestalt hive mind that uses mineral upkeep. We do know that technocracy is one of the most powerful civics available to a biological empire, so reducing the power there is good. I, I don't yet know if this is, has gone too far. Possibly it's not even gone far enough, actually. Possibly this is not quite the change we needed, but uh, increasing that upkeep cost is going to be quite a, a hamper to biological empires that are really wanting to push out science in the early game. 